and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery. <laughs> I fucked it up already. This is not the monastery. <laughs> this is Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. Good yeah. job breaking it, hero. <laughs> GM. Wow, that did not take long at all. Nope. I am not at all. only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. Ha 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 ha. We have the ha the handsomest of devils and the and the man who it, the man who has probably one probably a few thousand contracts that he has to keep that he has to keep employed because everybody keeps trying to sell their soul. I mean, he is. It the, ain't. He is. It ain't easy area. be. It ain't easy being pretty. <laughs> <laughs> eh, the better known as Good Brother JT. We have the man taking over your taking over your an your anime and guiding you through VTubers. Including a more recent edition that has me very, very, very worried. <laughs> Good brother Shades. And we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. Uh, yes, and we have a, a better sound system today. R&D has been good. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> Um, no, I think Shade JJ's Q still got you beat on that one, there, by Zana. You need to uh, catch the fuck up. Ah, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> too busy developing giant robots. Yeah. Catch up to me. Uh, <laughs> okay, you went on that front. <laughs> as an aside, um, the reason why that's an excuse. That's an excuse for being late. I was busy developing giant robots, sir. <laughs> hey, it's a lot better than my dog exploded. <laughs> <laughs> but. I will. The reason why I said that I'm wor that I'm worried about about a new person joining VTubing is, Quiet Shy is has decided to become a VTuber. <laughs> the corruption spreads. <laughs> That's cute. You think you think that this is corrupting Quiet Shy? <laughs> oh no no no! It's not corrupting in the way you would normally think, but. Uh... The, 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 the VTubers, have, the, the, the concept of VTubers is a virus that is spreading like wildfire. Everyone's becoming a VTuber now. Oh. Netflix has got one, sort of. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's we don't talk about that. That didn't happen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, I've, con I've, consi I've, considered I've considered jumping on the bandwagon myself just so I can boast that I'm the, that I'm the first, I'm the first true, t that'd be the first true tabletop VTuber. <laughs> yeah, I think the only branded VTuber that's been able to get away with it is Vienna, who's who's basically Cloud 9s official VTuber. Yeah, she's the only one who's actually done it right. <laughs> yeah. Because while well, well, there's been a few, while well, there's been a few VTubers who have dipped a a pinky into my, into it's my pond, there. um they're all a bunch of amateurs. No offense. <laughs> You know, get Although it has been endearing to watch the EN, the you know, Hollow Myth girls play a uh, World of Darkness. I'll give them credit for choosing a game that isn't shit. <laughs> they, chose, they chose Hunter. I think it was a pretty good choice. Which, I'll be honest, them going with Hunter is actually Im is impressive because let's play a little word association, Zan. If somebody if somebody says that they're running a World of Darkness game, what immediately comes to mind? Almost everyone will say either vampire or werewolf. Yep. Some people will say mage, but that's because they're twisted motherfuckers like us. That, that's that, that's because they're me. I'm the guy who says, mage 20th, let's do it. <laughs> and then everybody looks at me and goes, fuck you, fuck your quintessence, fuck your chaos, and fuck the weird mal shaped eldritch horror thing that used to be a horse you rode in on. <laughs> <laughs> the mo Shades, the, the kindest thing I can say about mage... Whether it be whether it be the ascension or the awakening, is that it is about is about bending reality over and making real and making reality your bitch. Oh, I think cool. I think my favorite uh ver my favorite flavor of the world of darkness to throw at people is wraith just to watch them fail the transition from death back into the world of the living. Um, but I'm a sadistic I, motherfucker like that. I threw, <laughs> I threw mummy at some players just as an April Fool's joke. <laughs> and then a year you later, I, then a year later, because they didn't learn, because I wanted to punish them and show them how bad things connect. Because you didn't throw a demon at them, did you? No, I didn't throw a demon at them. I threw something worse. Changeling? Nope. 
Promethean. No. No! Monk! <laughs> they had, cause oh, some, somebody had said that the, that, it, that, it, that it would be physically impossible for White Wolf to put out a bad game. Monk, there's a difference between sadism and violating the Geneva and Hague conventions. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you this? Sid, <laughs> you are one to fucking talk pot meat kettle! I, hey, hey, I didn't sign the Geneva or Hague Conventions. Zadari Enterprises is an international organization that is not beholden to any one country. <laughs> Fuck their laws. Do you have, do you have a, do you, did you, re, do you have a mother base somewhere? Or possibly multiple ones? We've got a bunch of diamonds shining in the sky, but they follow me like dogs. <laughs> but the sword uh, is this. That, are you like the leader of Shocker or something like that? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, he'd look he'd look terrible in red. <laughs> also, remember what happened to the Shocker analog in um in the original Amazon? <laughs> That's not. Yeah. Also, I don't see you wearing a point. I I can't see you wearing a pointy hood. I'm not the KKK. Of course not. <laughs> Even I will scream so low as to call him out on call him that. <laughs> no, you are you're definitely not Starfish Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rails. He, he, he's closer to Ant Capone, let's be honest here. Uh, <laughs> Rails, uh, I think. Yeah. At this point. So getting them. getting back getting back to sanity, this is a topic that I initially planned on doing last week. But because of the fact that Tokarist was doing a double feature for Movie Night, I decided to call a little bit of an audible. And spoiler warning, it won't be the last time I call an audible when it comes to the scheduling for Geek Watch. But, I mean, it's the re there's a reason why Card Subject to Change is used, was used on pay-per-view ads back in the day. Still kind of is. Mm -hmm. Because, well, shit happens. But this is a this is a topic that I had I had conceived a while back, but it took but it took on a different form. And this is one of those cases where it is where it is time for us to it's time for us to don our hats, refer reference the reference our Philip reference our best Philip Marlowe, and count up Crunchyroll sins. Sa, omayo sumeo, kaza. <laughs> so, as I pro now obviously, obviously, Crunchyroll as a streaming service needs no in needs no introduction, and one would th one would think that this is us drinking the haterade for for Crunchyroll gi given given events over the last few years. That is not my intent with this. The intent with this is the intent as it always is: have a little bit of fun at somebody's expense. You know, because let us not forget, no one is above reproach. Everybody is fair game, including us. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. we always love to engage in a little bit of schadenfreude, <laughs> making us th glad that we're not them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Brother Shades, I'd like you to set the stage for tonight. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, once again, stepping into my, uh, my territory, and I'm proud to be here for this. So, for those of you who have not heard the history, basically back in 2006, a bunch, uh, a bunch of students at the University of California, Berkeley, decided to put together a fan sub site for anime. Of course, this was not the of course this was not the legal streaming conglomerate we know today. These guys were literally a pirate site. You know, because back then there was no legal streaming. Hell, Funimation hadn't even jumped into that bandwagon yet. So uh, those were the days. Mm -hmm. I know, right? The closest we had was the anime network, and that was beca that was catching on to the whole on-demand boom on um, cable. Abs yeah. But things took a turn when in 2008, two years later, they actually secured a capital investment from uh, venture uh, from the venture capital firm uh, Ver Venrock. For the tune of about four point oh five million dollars. Yeah, damn. <laughs> yeah, for that's a, that's for a hell of a lot of money for a startup. For what? Yeah. Especially, yeah. <laughs> for what I was gonna say, for what essentially amounts to what used to be called a pirate radio. Yeah. <laughs> 
Needless to say, this got pe pe places like Bandai and Funimation a little pissed off. Because <laughs> it's like, you're getting that kind of money for a pirate site? The fuck? But that's because, Funima that's because Crunchyroll had other plans. Because they began securing legal distribution agreements, starting with uh, Gonzo. And in 2009, they announced a deal with TV Tokyo to host episodes of Naruto Shippuden. And, not long afterwards, they started removing all of their copyright infringing material. And became legit. And little by little, they began growing their numbers. Getting stuff like the North American DVD rights to stuff the movie 5 centimeters per second. Working with Kodansha with, uh, in 2013 to begin distributing manga titles. Like Attack on Titan and Fairy Tale. And little by little, just adding more and more into their lineup. Until they eventually became one of the number one places to watch legal streaming anime subtitled here in the West. This was a pretty big deal. This literally changed the landscape of the anime industry because this they proved that streaming anime legally in the U.S. was a viable option. And that's when companies like Funimation, Netflix, Amazon, and others started realizing, hey, we can get in on this shit too. It is undoubtedly thanks to Crunchyroll that we have the vast library of anime available to us that we have today. You know, So no matter what we say tonight, we got to give the devil its due. They did some good, but things. This came with some consequences. Uh, over the years, they've worked with other. They've uh, passed the ownership of the company along, first to the Shernan uh, Shernan Group, basically a uh, owned by former News Corp president Peter Shernan. Which you know, considering my uh, my issues with News Corp, yeah, not exactly the best. <laughs> but they later also worked with Funimation. Uh, and a bit of a crossover deal, and which actually would have been really awesome, except then that man fell apart as it was later bought out by at t Basically, Otter Media bought out the remaining shares. Uh, which is a, you know, uh, that was when, that's when a lot of the stuff that happened happened. This was back in 2018, and uh, that's when shit started going wrong. <laughs> I, I would say 2018, when Otter Media took over, that's when shit went wrong. And that has continued into to the modern, into today, whereas of uh, August of 2020, now Sony, the guys who also own Funimation, bought out Crunchyroll, creating a bit of a problem. A, ve a very big problem. First off, um, the justice the Justice Department has been looking very closely at that at that deal because it comes very close to a monop to a monopoly. Um, I do find it funny that S that Sony tried to argue that that wouldn't be the case because they because they would be competing with the likes of um, Hulu was it was and that is that is that is directly from their response to the accusation from the from the um, an from the antitrust department. Yeah, see, here's the problem with that. Uh. Funimation works with Hulu to post some of their stuff on their streaming service. So, uh, yeah, that argument kind of falls flat. If you were going to make a fair argument, <coughs> you've got Viz Media and High Dive to, 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 uh, as your competition. However, they that combined probably owns, covers maybe 10% of the market share at best. Yeah. Not to mention, I think High Dive does more they they've they've filled out their library with a lot of older stuff and a few of the newer things very very rarely come their way a lot of the newer yeah. stuff is thanks to sentai filmworks who's basically the reincarnation of adv films mm -hmm. <clears throat> bottom line though is that yeah this con this con this problem is still something that is being looked at though it it looks like the deal has gone through it is official yeah, That's, uh, I'm pretty sure the the Justice Department found that it wasn't yet a monopoly. Yeah, so <laughs> but I it's get, official. I get the feeling it's a case of the deal's going th the deal's going through, but thin ice, very thin ice. Now, another the big one of the bigger topics that we're going to be covering tonight is the fact that you know, Funimation or Crunchyroll has slowly been introducing a whole bunch of their own content to things now. For a while, this was actually not a bad thing because a lot of what they were introducing was just their own anime adaptations. They were adapting stuff that hadn't been adapted yet. And we'll be covering a bit of that tonight. Mm -hmm. 
But then in twenty eight and then October in twenty eighteen, that changed with an announcement of a show that we will not be talking about much tonight, but I think we have to at least acknowledge because, well, quite frankly, it's one of the problems. And that, of course, would be High Guardian Spice. Now, when it, I think I said everything that I wanted to say regarding High Guardian Spice in the and monastic it. therapy episode, which the sole reason I did that was twofold. One, we already had that we already had this particular episode in the back burner for a few weeks. And then then I found out that Doku decided to sit through the entire se- the entire season against against my be- against my better um suggestion. If I had, if I had known about, if I had known about it ahead of time, I would have tried to stop him. I wouldn't have been successful, but I would have tried. Mm-hmm. But I figured I figured if we ended up including that in this episode, it would end up taking too much time. So I figured we I'll do a spe- we'll do a special that is that isn't a numbered episode and get all of the high guardian spice bullshit out of our system that way. Yeah. But we can also we can bring up the fact that there is that's not the only thing that they did that's not strictly Japanese anime as they also began working with a deal with the popular uh, app Webtoon mm-hmm. and produced three titles based on certain popular Webtoon properties. Mm-hmm. Again, we'll be covering those shortly. Yeah. Now, the idea the idea of do of doing that kind of thing to diverse to essentially diversify what your what your output is on paper is not a bad idea. However, the prop. I liken it to the to the same things that doomed Euro Disney because yes, I've been watching def, I've been watching Defunct Land um, lately. I'm honestly, kind of disappointed it took me this long to actually wa- to actually watch them. Um, and more specifically, I watched their video on why Euro Disney was such a massive disaster. <laughs> the big the biggest issue was an inability to read the room because the f- the French public hated it, whereas, the, despite despite the positive reception that they claimed to have gotten, the French public absolutely hated it. They they saw it. They saw it. The um they, the neighbors where the, where the land was where the land was stayed had made had made concerns about fi- about the fireworks issue causing noise problems, and there was the fact that. The name Euro has a much different connotation than they th- than Disney had thought. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm skimming over a lot of the details. I do highly recommend watching the failure of Euro Disney um video on Defunct Land. I think I I've, I'm a fan of Defunct TV, but I'll check out I'll check this one out too. <laughs> Well, Defunct, Defunct Land mostly covers bad bad rides or bad or bad theme parks or interesting theme yeah, yeah. parks. In the case of Action Park, which is a story in and of itself, but I do highly recommend them. Cool. Um, they did they did like a they did a hour and a half long documentary on the whole on how the Fast Pass idea got out of control. Mm. But. In this case, the big one of the big problems is that inability to read the room, and I think it. I think a since you brought up the webtoon thing, I think that makes a very good parallel, and you know how much I love parallels. Oh yeah. Now we'll get into the, we'll get into the specifics of them in a minute, but it, but from what I recall, the three shows that there were, you said three shows, two of them I'm familiar with. I'm I'm just trying to remember what the third one was. So the th- one the of them, three, the three, yeah, sorry, one of them was um, Tower of God. The other was the God of High School. I don't recall what the third one was. That would be Noblis. Mm-hmm. Is it? And yeah, which um, is interesting is interesting in of itself because that's it because that's a that's both a webtoon and a manhwa. Well, that's what most actually no. All three of them are technically manhwas. All three of them were basically, you know, they have the same style, the same art, the same kind of pro- formatting. It is they're all manhwas. Manhwas, for those who don't know, is the Korean version of manga, where but instead of it being 
in this simple page format where you read from left to right, they actually prefer a uh, more of a long form uh, vertical format, which is you know honestly perfect for mobile devices, mm-hmm. which is why Webtoon blew up on mobile phones before too long. And also, we should note that a new another new series. Uh, oh no, that's that's just a webcomic in general. It's not a webtoon, but those three definitely fit the bill. Uh, and we mentioned Tower of God. That was the big one. That kind of like they they put their money behind Tower of God. It got all the promotion. It was the one that they featured the most. And uh, oh, we'll get, we'll, get to, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to it. But what I want to I want to focus on is the fact that the putting putting aside the quality of some of some of the output, the web the webtoon collaboration did not get nearly as much backlash as the high guard as high guard and spice did and and i think we can explain why yeah because now, the, go sorry go ahead my theory on the matter is one of them is at least adjacent enough there's ar- there's already a there's already a bit of a venn diagram that goes on between manga and manhwa and that's be, that's yeah. been a thing that's been a thing for a while and there's plenty of Korean animation studios that are used as helper studios for anime production. So there's enough crossover there that fans, when they saw that, they're like, "Okay, you know what? It's it's in the same vein. It's got the same feel. It's you know, it's a fair it's a fair thing." Mm-hmm. Whereas something like High Guardian Spice did not look like anime. Did not had put had poorly marketed its, itself and talking about its warmth and the and focusing more on gender obsession when it came to the, when it came to the production staff and did, and did not and and did not advertise what it was actually going to be about which was yeah, the thing Yeah it I, was a failure on multiple fronts there yeah. And the key th- the I'd say one of the other key things this is something I brought up in the monastic therapy episode I would say it I would say it's very fair it's very fair to me that there was a na- that for the longest time there was a narrative regarding the selling point of Crunchyroll this idea of su- of support of um by supporting this by supporting this service you people would have people would have an option to directly support the industry that was producing the stuff that they that they like and the ad- and even even with something even with something like webtoons as far as from what i recall at least w- at at least one of those at least one of the webtoon collabs was animated by studio mappa who already yeah. had who already had a decent already had a decent um track record up until that point there were of course later problems but that's a story for another day yeah actually uh both yeah, God of High School was was Studio Mappa, and also Noblesse was was done by Production IG. Mm-hmm. And Production so. IG's track record is beyond question. <laughs> yeah, but the but com- contrast contrast that with with something like High Guard. I'd say the I'd I'd say the other thing is the fact that when they advertised them. What was the focus of that advertisement? The story and show and showing some sizzle reel animation. You know, the kind of thing that you would expect from any any um any hype any hype um package for an upcoming anime. Whereas yeah. with with High Guardian Spice, it was it it was not it was anything but that. In fact, I look. I look at that particular announcement as something that will be a teachable moment for the next twenty years as to how not to advertise your product. And, and you know what's even funnier? I, I'm actually doing like my research right now. You know, everyone thinks that High Guardian Spice was Crunchyroll's first like American only production, but actually it wasn't. No. In November of 2020, they had released a series called Onyx Equinox, which was also an original work. Created, created uh, by Sophia Alexander. Yes, that in all accounts was also not an anime. Did look like an anime, but wasn't marketed at all. Like I didn't even know this existed until tonight. I knew about it 
only because I ended up covering it a long ass time ago when we were still doing the monastery live format. Ah. And I believe I I believe I talked about it on the on the trailer and it did it did look like one of the a more a high production high production western or the, or like or some of the um more serious western animations that we were seeing out of certain studios in Canada. Yeah. But at the but at the same time the part of the reason that I was interested in it is because it was tackling a subject matter that I rarely saw tackled that being Aztec mythos. Right. Bless so you. it was handling something it was it did a lot more right than it did wrong. But the point I think we should get to this is that when they pushed High Guardian Spice and their Crunchyroll or like their country their official Crunchyroll Studios productions that broke people's perception of Crunchyroll as supporting the industry and this caused people to look a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and this was I think this is the one of the bigger sins that we need to address before we start talking about the originals is that the idea that Crunchyroll was actually supporting the industry is honestly not true let me give you guys an idea of just how bad Crunchyroll has fucked things up mm. do you guys know how much Crunchyroll pays its translators for their work? A pittance. <laughs> Probably more like, the much, more like how much it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Very. The, very sorry. Go I, ahead. Was gonna, I was going to say very likely the uh, the same pittances paid to a lot of uh, Wuxia and Xiangxia, uh translators before places like Wuxia World got big. Yeah. The actual pay rate. And I don't know if this is still true. This was from like a year ago, but they might have changed, but I would highly doubt it. $80 per episode. Mm. That's only just enough to piss people off. <laughs> exactly. That, it, yeah, that sounds about the same as, as how um, translators have been paid by the word before. That's pretty fucked. Yeah, mm. let's put it this way. Uh, if you, you know, since a lot of these days we're looking at mostly 12 episode series for a single season of a 12 episode anime, that totals out to about 960 bucks for a, for something that would probably take weeks and stuff to put together. My and wife I'll makes more than that per paycheck every two weeks at her job. Mm-hmm. And translating and localizing uh, is more than just translating a uh, spoken word. It's signs and other things that have to be translated for context as well. Localization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, you know, basically, I, I'm actually doing the math right now. That's about three weeks worth of, uh, of pay right there. For one show. If you're going by your standard 40 hour work week. At minimum wage. Mm -hmm. mm. And. Nah, I think what. I think what certainly didn't help is. Within, within a few. Within a couple of weeks of. Of the. Of that particular. Of that particular. Not a couple of weeks but. Within short time of that particular HGH announcement. There was that infamous video where they did a tour of their brand new office. Which yeah. Which was as tone deaf as you can get. The oh, not tone deaf at all, Monk. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But yeah, that, that's, that's what broke the illusion for a lot of people. Myself included to some extent. It's like... You know, I didn't. I didn't expect them to be. You know, making the anime the anime industry this whole rich thing that everyone would benefit from. But I figured they at least give them a boost. But no, they're just they're doing the exact same thing that the that Japan's doing with their with their artists. It's sweatshop prices. They're treating their employees like they're in a fucking sweatshop, and it's ridiculous. Meanwhile, they're raking in billions of dollars in subscription fees. Like, you honestly telling me you can't afford, like, to 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 pay, take some of that money and pay your fucking employ the people you're hiring to translate your shit? That's helped, you know, at least a, enough to live off of. For fuck's sake! 
Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. And I'd say I'd say I'd say something that did that didn't help is correct me if I'm wrong, but around this time both Crunchyroll and Funimation were dealing with what engineers would call teething troubles when it came to the, when it came to the site. To some extent, yeah, Funima uh, Funimation was probably more egregious on this regard because God knows their fucking player only this last few months finally got an upgrade that it so desperately needed. Crunchyroll's player, while for a while was pretty bad, they were the first one of the two to get their shit together and get it fixed. No, it was and back back in 2018. I I, I straight uh, I was uh, stuck straight for circumstances. I was stuck streaming on a tablet, and uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was bad for a while. <laughs> Yeah, but they've they've since gotten things together, and yeah, they both, have that. both sites have g fixed their players to be a lot more viable, and they fixed their site overall. Like you know, Funimation you could debate, but Crunchyroll site is actually very well designed. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I'd say what certain I'd say what certainly doesn't what doesn't what doesn't hurt is having bet is having better navigation, and I. I realize that it, I realize that it's a bit repetitive on my part to bit to bitch about navigation, but as long as I keep having to put it, having to put up with sites who can't understand how to navigate things properly, I'm gonna have to keep bitching about it until the message gets um some root in people's head. Yeah, I, I would say Funimation still has some room to grow on that regard. Trying to find uh, spe specific things in anime can be a little bit hectic in there, but it's still organized enough that you can usually find stuff without too much trouble. Mm -hmm. Crunchyroll, on the other hand, very solid. They have their stuff uh, fetch easier to find stuff. Hell, if you specifically want to find what cr what anime Crunchyroll is dubbed, they finally allow you to start doing that now. So yes. you know all of the stuff that they got dubbed. Mm -hmm. I, I, do remember, I do remember seeing some people complaining about, about having to play whack-a-mole regarding what they've dubbed and what they haven't. Or at least what stuff they've licensed to dub, because they had stuff like Toradora. Yeah. And I will. I'd say. I'd, I'd say one of the other one of the other um, things that pe that people were so, that pe that was used as a selling point um, that I don't hear I don't hear used as a selling point as much now. But I may, I may be wrong on this. Is simulcasting the idea that you're get that you're getting. A, you're getting a you're getting a sub of episodes as they're appearing in Japan. That when before people started realizing how shit their employees were getting treated, simulcasting was a huge deal. It was a big thing, mm -hmm. and obviously the the combination of that ex, that uh, that realization combined with the coof probably made it a lot harder for them to keep up simulcasting. So it's definitely been downplayed heavily. Yeah. And I think, I think the reason you haven't heard as much of a stink about it is because of the fact that it would be it would be hard to argue that they should with what with all the external factors. Yeah. Uh, that be that being that being said, I do have to, I do have to admit this. Um, there have been there have been plenty of moments where Crunchyroll's um, social media accounts have made me break out the crab going silence brand. <laughs> I get that. I get that they're trying, but people, don't try. Don't try and be Wendy's Twitter. You can't do it. That was a natural thing. Whoever was running that account just knew what the fuck they were doing. Unless you know, unless you know for a fact you've got somebody who can do that, don't hurt yourself trying. And the way that the way the way that they were able to make that. The way that the Wendy's Twitter was able to make it work was what was one by breaking the fourth wall plenty, and two by talking shit to other restaurants. Yeah, uh, by, uh, by making the entire wor the entire world of their industry a a fair battlefield, essentially. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no no one was safe. <laughs> yeah, well, ev they even went out. They even went outside. They even went outside of that and started talking shit about other companies. Yeah. Or PETA. Talking shit about PETA was one of the favorite things most of the <laughs> restaurant brands did. Hey, anyone who shits on PETA is alright in my book. Mm -hmm. 
I love how PETA is never one. Once, like I said, with Fallout 76 on Saturday, PETA is an evergreen joke. Simply, simply because it. No matter, we could. I could live to be a hundred years old and pick and picking on PETA will always be in vogue. <laughs> oi, oi. Yeah. Now, that being said, now. Well, we will definitely be calling out a lot of Crunchyroll's faults. They have done, you know, this is not like we said before. This is not us shitting on front on Crunchyroll as a whole. Mm -hmm. For all the for the bad that they've done, they've done a lot of good. Yeah, you know, they they've put out some great, you know, they licensed some great anime, got some stuff dubbed that probably wouldn't have gotten dubbed. You know, my life, my next life is a villainess. Great series, definitely deserved. It got a good dub out of it. Not a bad job. And a lot of the originals we'll be talking about. Are some good stuff. There's a couple in there that I really like, you know. But to sit here and not and ignore the mistakes that they've made is a fallacy. And we don't do and do we don't deal in fallacies around here lightly. No, 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 no we do not. <laughs> I will admit that when it came to them jumping on the v, jumping on the VTuber bandwagon or corruption, as you eloquently called it before we went live. Um, <laughs> I'd say they. I'd say they did. I'd say they did it significantly more elegantly than than um than say net than say Netflix or some other companies that tried to do it. I think I can explain why because the thing is, Crunchyroll Hime was not some brand new thing that they just came up to make a VTuber out of it. She had already been a thing for quite a number of years now. It's just that you know by this point, making her a VTuber was kind of just like one of those things. She's like, why wouldn't they do that? It just made too much sense. Like they've had comics about her. They've used her in all of their marketing. Like it was just the inevitable evolution of what they were gonna do with her. So yeah, of course they're gonna do what? it. And it's not why like not? They, it's not like it's a one, it's not like they were doing a one and done of the thing why because, not? well, I ch I checked I checked the um, channel for that. And Crunchyroll Hime is st is still doing things. Yeah. Oh, like three days ago she was doing a she was doing a It Takes Two stream. They they are doing it the right way, you know. Uh, other, she's one of the few branded VTubers, as I would call them, that actually got the job done right. So far, her and Vienna from Cloud Nine are the only two that I know of that actually got the job done. PlayStation even tried to do this shit and failed miserably. <laughs> not only, not only that. Um, Netflix tried to do that with the Enco with um, Enco, <laughs> and they got laughed out of the building. <laughs> well, one get laughed out of the building, and two, they didn't commit. No, because like, they <laughs> the closest that we got was was um the was the Enco was the Enco show. But all, but there, but you don't see, and you don't see any, you don't. There aren't, there weren't any trailers. There, there's a, there's a few shorts and a few, a few, um, ca a few cameos with with three D people. But can, but there, but no shows, no, no just chat, no just chatting streams or anything or anything like that. Yeah, that that's the thing about if you're gonna do something like a VTuber as, as a brand. You gotta commit to a hell. Sonic the fucking Hedgehog got this shit right. <laughs> I I would like I would like to say, uh, Shades, we know that the real reason Sony failed, besides being based in the US now, is because Merriweather already made a better one. <laughs> well it's fucking Merriweather, of course he he knows what the fuck he's doing. I actually I actually read one of the uh, webtoons he's uh I read like Ten of his webtoons, and I, I also I read. Uh, I think it was like my high school succubus is the one he, he helped. My, my my succubus girlfriend, yeah. My succubus girlfriend, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't it. I it doesn't exactly hurt that, say PS five say PS five Chan looks 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 like a gen, looks like a rule sixty three Kaiba. <laughs> it doesn't hurt that that PS5 Chan definitely looks like a dummy mommy. <laughs> <laughs> also, in terms of like VTubers, of course, Mary Weather knows how to do this shit right. He's a VTuber himself. <laughs> it's everywhere, my God. Oh, it absolutely is. That's why we keep trying to drag you down the rabbit hole, JT. No, <laughs> it's no, it's no. gonna be that you're gonna deal with it eventually. We're gonna help guide you down there. Oh no, no shades. You wanna you wanna know how? How uh, insidious VTubing is, and how good I am at getting people down the rabbit hole. 
Uh, my girlfriend, who basically only likes a few things when it comes to anything nerdy at all. <clears throat> I told her, watch VTubers. They're fun. You might find one you like. She told me, I'm not going to like any of them. She watches Iron Mouse clips now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Rails, rails. So, JT, we will get you down the rabbit hole. No, 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 no. This, this devil is... This devil will not slide. I, 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 I will fight it to the end. Zan? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have work to do, brother. Fam I, ex I accept the challenge, sir. JT, famous last words. <laughs> yeah. Sir. So you, may, <laughs> you may think yourself the devil, but please, give the man of chaos his due. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rails, rails, rails. Getting, Let's get getting back, 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 getting back rails, onto, rails. Getting, getting back onto the rails. Um, I will. It, I will admit that the that when it comes to when it comes to the I'd say when it comes to the membership. They managed to do one thing that Crunchyroll didn't, and that is not annoy oh, me God. if I le if I leave for a time. Who? Like, right, Crunchy like, Crunchyroll did better than who? Then Funimation. Y you said Crunchyroll on both fronts. I could have I could have swore I didn't, but I but if that's the case. That's the fuck up. That's the fuck up on my part. But yeah, yeah. Fun Funimation. When I had I have a on again off again subscription with Crunchyroll. Um, and when, and I did, I, at one point I had a subscription with both Crunchyroll and Funimation because I, because I wanted to do dub and sub comparison with certain things. And with Crunch, with, um, with Funimation, after I left, I would get, I would get, I would get messages every now and then of the whole, we miss you, we miss you, you open to coming back, that kind of thing. I would get, I would get that like three, I would get that like three times. I didn't get I didn't get anything like that from Crunchyroll. Mm. Which I think is a, I th I think is as a as a bit of a pro tip for anybody who anybody who oh, is de is dealing with um a subscription service don't do the whole we mi don't do the whole we miss you emails because that all that's going to do is piss people off. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when I used to have a GameFly subscription back when that was relevant. <laughs> uh, they did the same shit for me for years. I was like, "Fuck! I can't. Uh, it's no point anymore. Why are you bothering me?" Mm -hmm. We really want your money, please. No, no, pretty no, much, no. yeah. That's, that's what it why, screams to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> why we hit that unsubscribe button. I think I um. I think I I think I had. I think I had oh. screen capped one of them once, and I said, "This is what. Don't you just went full friendster? Never go full friendster." Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Do not also, speak to me of the old magics. I was there when they were made. I know. <laughs> <laughs> also, another point in Crunchyroll's favor is the fact that they had tiered subscription services. Yeah, and they still kind of do this. Mm -hmm. Is if if you just want a couple of benefits, you just want you know the ad-free anime and everything like that. You can pay a small amount if you want a few extra bonus features like access to their manga. Or, acts, or or some discounts on merch, you can go pay a few extra bucks and get that. You know, you don't have to pay an exorbitant fee, which, given today's streaming uh, landscape, is a good thing to have! Or you can remain completely free, and sure, you'll be a week behind everything that's si simulcast. Guilty, but, right here. <laughs> but you'll still have access to all that sweet, sweet anime for free. I think there's only like a few series that are completely locked behind the subscription, and that's not enough to completely ruin everything. Yeah, that's very not even few. enough to bear it. Especially for a guy <laughs> like me who's less concerned about what the latest and greatest thing is, and more and more about um, treasure hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, well, in um, your case, you're better off with high dive. <laughs> like, I, I have, like, for inst for for instance, um. One of these days, I do one, one particular. I'm not going to say great one, but an interesting one that I do want to do a do a watch party on, just so people can experience one of the most visually interesting anime I've I've that I've ever seen is Gankutsuo. I was just about oh, to say that. Count Monte Cristo mm -hmm. in mm. space. <laughs> Madame, Monsieur, Bonsoir. Bonsoir. 
<laughs> I, know, I know some people really hated its visual style, but I can but I can say this: love it or hate it, you're not going to forget it. Which is usually Cthulhu the best is thing. Super good. Yeah, I th- it, it's, it's a basic retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo with a sci-fi twist, mm-hmm. and yeah, the visuals are something that you will never forget. It, it, it's one of the best things Gonzo has ever made. Mm. Which is saying something, because for the longest time, Gonzo was my whipping boy because of their um, obvious CG habits. I don't hate I mean, Gonzo, and they've done plenty of good. They've done plenty of good stuff, but. When you see the obvious CG, you're not, you're not, you're gonna remember it. Uh huh. <laughs> I um. I mean, if if you're gonna go for a uh, for visually um diverse monk, the next name better not be Yuasa. That better not Cat be the name out of your mouth. Huh? Cat soup. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 that is on the torture list. I will I will inflict that on people, just not yet. I mean it's interesting and you'll never forget it. Monk, I've got the button on standby if you need it. No, not yet. Hold the button. JT, are you, uh, try- are you trying to do are you trying to pull a grim of worm tongue or something? I was gonna say, I've been hearing you whispering shit all night. Yeah. <laughs> or are you, or are you practicing for your ASMR career? <laughs> I, I do, do. If I'm doing that, I, I, I don't even notice. I didn't even notice that, man. I just. Yeah, we've yeah. been hearing you whispering things quietly the entire night. I've been hearing it. Yeah. I just <laughs> thought he was going for the whole devil thing. He's trying. Right? To... That's what I thought. I'm like, what? yeah, I thought he was talking to someone off camera. Matt. Yeah, I uh, no, I'm just sitting here balancing my checkbook, man. I'm just, uh, I, just uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I was just, yeah. Oz, Sorry, we're gonna have man. to teach I'm, him the art of push to talk. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, no, I'm a bit flustered here. Sorry about that. I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's my, I don't think it's my roommates through the walls. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, uh, yeah my apologies. I, I, I'll, I'll you, I, I think we'll have to teach you the art of push to talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, my apologies. I'll be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's it. We're just messing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, when it comes to, we've talked. When it comes to the, when it comes to the idea of them doing, them doing, mer- them doing merch, um, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a dumb question, and maybe, and maybe you'll have more insight on this than I, than I have, Shades. But it, to your recollection, was the idea of Crunchyroll doing their own convention ever, fl- ever floated in the rumor mill? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever heard of such a thing until it's happened. But at the same time, it was one of those cases of, well, why wouldn't, again, it's a case of why wouldn't they? It's anime conventions are like one of the things you do. So why wouldn't they have their own convention? They are the biggest anime site out there. I'm just, I'm just saying they, if they did, they they, they, they have one. That's what we're saying. We know they have one, but it's like before it became a thing, did did the idea of that ever go floating around? If it um, did, it was a case of why haven't they done it already? <laughs> I I don't think it went floating around other than within people who were fans of it at the time. Because yeah. this is before they had a larger amount of capital. Um and then twenty seventeen they have all that capital. Yeah. to work with but doing an anime convention just made too much goddamn sense you know announcing new titles there having guests and you know having the connections they do it was basically it was a case of why don't they do that or for that matter just rip off the dev stream that digital extremes does every few months you know because the because the and yet yeah one could say that nintendo pioneered this kind of thing with nintendo direct but um I give I give Digital Extremes a special case on this because they're fully independent. Obviously, Crunchyroll yeah. isn't, but still, I do get the feeling that a that a full on, for lack of a better term, Crunchy Con is going to happen in the next ten years. Oh no, they've already got one. They have the yeah. Crunchyroll Expo. Yeah, started That's, in twenty seventeen. Yeah. That's what we're saying. It's already happened. Mm-hmm. Hell, they've got their own fucking awards show. <laughs> yeah, and if I'm being honest. 
the award show that they have is only slightly better than the Game Awards. Only slightly better. There is one <laughs> fatal flaw with it, and it is something I say about any award show out there. An award show that is exclusively fan votes is destined to be shit. Always. It's I mean, usually because it's usually always, you know, a series that came out in the last three months. <laughs> yeah. When when Crunchyroll put out their anime of the decade for twenty twenty or for twenty nineteen, and the, the the anime of the decade was Demon Slayer that had just come out that year. I swear to fucking God. That, that was spans. when I was like, oh, okay. Fucking attention spans. Jesus. Now, Sorry. I'm now telling you. Let, let's be fair. I would have given Demon Slayer anime of the year for 2019. Oh, no, that's no argument. Demon that's Slayer no deserved argument. anime of the year, but to call it anime of the decade. Of the that's, decade. That's where I had to draw the line and go, no. Yeah, I know. Whenever I think no, 2010 no, is the no. first thing that comes to mind is No Game, No Life. That will always be my anime. Of the <laughs> you and that <laughs> series, I swear. <laughs> although, sen although um, since it involves a decade, um, if you listen close, you can hear Narutaki blaming decade for it. On <laughs> any decade! Hey, we can get away with it. We've got double on the splash screen. Fuck you. <laughs> or we got skull on the splash screen. Yeah. And this. Well, as far as far as the whole, you only get one. Um, that's an RVT rule. That's not a Geek Watch rule. No, oh. it's somewhat enforced here, but only if it, that only if necessary. Mm -hmm. And only he knows all of us here. We know how to restrain ourselves. Yeah, but even Zan. <laughs> but right, I'm not. To, I'm not cure. <laughs> when it comes to when it comes when it comes to voting pro when it comes to voting processes for for um enthusiast awards. I've always seen it. At, I've always seen it that there seems to be two extreme ends of a pendulum. On one end is the inside is the inside people you don't who you don't even see. There's no transparency, so and you have people try and pander to them, i.e. the Oscar, Golden Globe, etc. method. And as an aside, I I find it absolutely hilarious that the Golden Globes is going to be a private event this year. <laughs> I think because mm, very I, telling. It's either, it's either telling that a that a they're sick of people who 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 have who have no grasp of the real world trying to tell us what um, politics we should have, or b nobody gives a shit about the Golden Globes. People barely gave a globe shit about the Golden Globes in the two thousands. I was gonna say I'm leaning more towards the latter on that front. <laughs> um, and the most I get, the most I ever gave a shit about when it came to television and movie awards. Was when Mister Rogers won his daytime Emmy. That was yeah. literally the only time I gave I gave a fuck. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Emmys, Golden Globes, Oscars, hell, even fucking the fucking Grammys. When it comes to audio stuff, I, I don't give a fucking. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just it a bunch of people. Matter. It's just a bunch of you know. It's just a bunch of pe career career people patting themselves on the back for having a particular for having a particular career. Yeah. I mean, I mean, where is the, you know, the garbage man of the year? You know, where is the, you know, doctor of the year? You know, I mean, I, I, I yeah. fail to see why we should put act, fucking actors who don't really, who don't really, you know, act, who, whose jobs don't actually contribute to the function of society on a fundamental and practical level. But for some reason, they, we put them in a higher tier than you know anybody else trying to make trying to you know make mo make money on a job. Uh, I'm sorry, that's just my blue collar you know union forever uh, you know mentality there. <laughs> but getting getting past getting past that, I will I will admit that I do somewhat f I, that I have somewhat followed think things like the Ennies and the and the Origins Game Fair awards. But it, in the but at the very least, in my defense, with those I have a. I have a reason for doing that. <laughs> oh, that be that being is that being it's part of it's part of my area of expertise. But you have that you have that end where it's the, where where it's almost this shadow council of vo of voters who seem to like a very specific thing. That's where we get the term Oscar bait. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then on the other end, you have full fan voted ones. Like say the like say the Steam Awards or yes the or yes Crunchyroll's awards system, and yeah, in my not, in my not so humble opinion, 
I think that there should be a I think that there should be a mid a middle ground. And the Game Awards tried to do tried to do what I'm suggesting, but they fucked it up. And that is the that that is that the that the oh, that that um you have a mix of both. You have you have a proper you have a proper panel a a transparent panel of of that would, you'd probably have it a mix of um you, of YouTubers v, um possible VTubers and um any to any or any tubers um people who've worked in the industry whether it be for whether it be for voice acting or for or for animation or just a representative and then you have the open voting end of things. Each of the each of them each of them kind of have having having a having a equal amount of weight. If if we're uh, if we're making our, our dream panelists, um, I'm ignoring Giga and, and Mother's Basement and going straight for Nux Taku. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't ever gonna happen. Yeah, as but the the point the. Contrast. The reason why I say the Game Awards kind of screwed it up is because while they had a fan voting, it only counted for one vote out of um, ten votes for a given awards thing. Yeah, it was it was the it was ten percent, and then ninety percent was their invisible panel. Yeah. <laughs> ah, and as much as it, at the very at the very least I'll give I'll give I'll give stuff like the stuff like Crunchyroll's anime awards credit on credit on the fact that they don't make a whole presentation out of it. No, they keep it strictly to just like text on a website. I mean, it'd be a good it'd be a good it'd be a good opportunity to do a, to do a live stream poking fun at awards shows once or twice like what the VMAs used to be. Hell yeah. Mm. Or what or for that matter the um Slammies in the, in its early days. Also, I'd like to point out that there's a bit of an outlier that we that we did name in the in in this whole thing, the Steam Awards. Um, it isn't an attention span issue usually. Uh, it's a fact, they, it's an issue of everything is eligible. Yeah, so you get a very wide buckshot. I'd say that the Steam Awards are probably one of the fairest. Mm -hmm. I granted, but, granted, um. Granted, things like he, things like the Ennies and the like are are definitely on that are definitely on that former end than the latter end. Mm -hmm. But the the reason, but I think the reason why I end up giving that why I end up giving at the very least the Origins Awards a pass is because is because of the fact that they've been, that the Origins Game Fair has been around since the seventies. Might be a little bit of nostalgia glasses for you there, then, Monk. I'd I'd say it's less of nostalgia glasses and more and more of they've built they've built up a because of the fact that they're affiliated with the art with the RPG with um the get with the Game Makers Association that they have a bit more credibility. Okay, I get it. And some of the some of the people who have been, who have been chairs on the Game Makers Association have been involved in. The Origins Awards, and they've only really had two major fuck ups. One of them was when a D and D won an award when um, D and D had already won one. The other one was when a was when a a um a adaptation of Mass Effect into the Fate Engine ended up ended up getting into the Origins Awards by accident. <laughs> it was a it was a good it was a good set it was a good PDF that that ended up going in there, but at the same time that could cause problems. Yeah, but I think it's a bit rails, monk. Mm -hmm. Now get getting back on getting back on it. I do under I do understand the push that the push that a lot of streaming services have 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 put towards when it comes to creating the, creating their own creating their own in-house projects cuz i I've, I've seen some i've seen some ask why why um why the likes of crunchyroll or netflix or the like would be trying to pursue original content a lot of it is due to the fact that the that established con that est that est an established library is is not going to be all that sustainable at some point eventually even if it takes years, people will have seen everything or be less inclined to 
see, to um, delve into a library that they've already seen the big stuff that they wanted to see. And there's also the fact that a lot of studios might decide to pursue things in a different direction and thus leave uh, sites like Crunchyroll and Funimation and most obviously Netflix out in the fucking cold. Uh, if you need an example of that, see what happened with Netflix and Disney. Yeah. <laughs> or if you want an even bigger an example, um, while not in exactly an anime, but definitely anime adjacent, see the fact that Katakawa is looking further and further at in-house localization for all their manga because of the, shall we say, mm, personal uh, edits that people have been shoehorning into manga here and there mm -hmm. it's funny you, it's funny this kind of thing is brought up given that there was that um that controversy that blew up where the where um a chapter of a certain manga d was not put into the official to the official um release on viz because because of fan service concerns supposedly uh, you're talking about the recent uh, pre uh, prevention chapter, of chapter chapter, chapter seventy four of <laughs> chapter seventy four uh, Ayakashi, Ayakashi Triangle. I have seen chapter seventy four through my various channels, and it is nothing different than what's come before. I don't get what they're so, tripping on. So here's here's the here's the thing well, about let's, that, let's, JT. Let's not, well, let's not digress too much. Let's let's. Well, let, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Let's, let's, let's end go into it before I go into why I brought this up. Yeah. The 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 thing with with chapter seventy four is yes, it is it is the same as the three or four chapters previous to it that are also full of a bunch of, frankly, actual nudity. The um, the the issue that a lot of people think of what's happening there is that there is nudity of a specific body type happening in that particular chapter that is. Oh, so uh, uncouth to the pearl clutchers in the West. Um, and what's really bad about blocking that specific chapter is that there are some very key, uh, actual key plot points there that skipping that chapter, you miss out. Yes, because people read the triangle for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, plot, I, I, plot I, I, I got you. I got you. It, it it's it's still a it still escapes me. Uh, I, yeah, I have I have read the chapter. It still escapes me. Um, I'm not. I I don't know. Uh, I, I I honestly don't know. It just uh... <laughs> plot jokes aside. The reason why I brought this up is because is because of the because of the fact that I've um I've noticed that some people have this very black and white attitude regarding regarding the piracy question. And the attitude that we that we have ha that that we have had is um, we we do not we we here in Geek Watch and the monastery do not publicly endorse piracy, but we are not but we also do not endorse giving people no choice. Yeah, <laughs> we we are much like Gabe back in the days, Gaben, our Lord, who even makes fun of himself. Thank you. That piracy is always a service issue. Mm -hmm. To use another example of the service issue, Game of Thrones was one of the most pi was ex was heavily pirated, and there are some. I know some people who ended up pi who ended up pirating it simply because of the fact that trying to finagle with HBO Go was way more trouble than it's worth. Prohibitively difficult. Mm -hmm. high, bar high barrier to entry. Yeah. Now, of course, you don't see that problem as much with HBO Max because I think they learned their lesson, but the point is is that when you when you put in th when you put in things to directly punish people who are trying to buy legit, you're not exactly giving a strong argument as to why as to why people should be paying you for that for that release instead of pirating. And there have been there have been there there have been the fair share of um tr of translation issues both in Crunchyroll and in and in Funimation. Some of which I understand, even though I don't don't stop bitching about them. Hi, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I I understand why some of the name changes have to happen because you don't want to get the lawyers involved. Doesn't mean I have to like it. 
No. So, no, no, no. And some some of them on the on the other hand, I'm a little bit le I'm a little bit less willing to go with. And there's one there's one particular one that is relevant to Zan, JT and myself that I've that has been brought up in the past and I've and I feel I should bring it up simply because this was a colossal fail. Let me tell you about Thunderbolt Fantasy. Oh no, <laughs> monk. <laughs> no. Okay. If, if I want a I love Thunderbolt if, Fantasy. Oh, I do too. It's I fucking, fucking love great. it so much. It's so goddamn good. Now, I find <laughs> To set the stage for those un for those unaware, Thunderbolt Fantasy is not technically an anime. It is a it is a pup it is a um live action puppet wuxia style series. That is a that was a um collaboration between Nitro Plus, Gen Urobuchi's company, and Peely. Peely being the one doing the doing all the puppetry work word as Nitro Plus is doing a lot of the writing. For anybody in the West who doesn't who still doesn't get what we're what we're talking about Think uh, Team America World Police, but, you know, actually serious and good for the most part. I would bring up <laughs> Wulin Warriors, but only a handful of people saw that. That was prehistoric, yeah. Pe that was prehistoric Peely before we even knew what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, that... yeah. And, it was, and, and it was an abridged series on top of that, too. So <laughs> exactly. Ex exactly. Yeah. But the point, the point is, this was, this was brought on, this was... Brought onto the onto the West through Crunchyroll, and in the pr in the process of translating, they made one major mistake. Now the names. Here's the, the names. Thing. The if you went if you went on the Crunchyroll and watched it, the audio that you're going to get is not the original Taiwanese audio. It is the Japanese dub. With with the with uh, and there are different there are name differences between the ta between the Taiwanese names of characters and the uh. Japanese names of characters, which, as JT had informed me, is the reason why the fan base comes up with nicknames for a bunch of characters. <laughs> yeah, it's it, 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 uh, online. It's just easier to just refer to them, refer to their nick, their fan name, fan yeah. nicknames. Now, Crunchyroll, for whatever reason, despite the fact that the Japanese dub is what is is what you're going to hear, decides to use the Taiwanese names in the subtitles. And it got so Make bad for me, I resorted to fan subs. Yeah, it makes it really confusing to determine who is who, who when you're saying one name in Japanese and what it says on the subtitles is entirely different. Yeah. And it doesn't help that Taiwanese is extremely hard to pronounce. Well, uh, I mean, to off uh, from 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 text. Yeah, and well, ta Taiwanese is, you know, as we all know, Taiwanese is, is the Republic of China. They they <laughs> are they are um, they are still trying to get back West Taiwan. Hmm. We're still waiting for that. Um, the CCP is unfortunately stopping them from getting back West Taiwan, but. We hope for a speedy resolution for Taiwan these days. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the spoken language of Taiwanese is a difference between mainland Chinese, and in all three of the of these, uh, now, now that we've involved a third language, all three of these you have uh, written portions that use the same pictographs. You know, actual written Chinese, Taiwanese, which is basically written Chinese, just pronounced different and the kanji in japan so yeah readings are going to be different and the smart and i i don't understand why this was done because the smart thing would the smart thing to do and the thing that the um fan subbers do is just tr is just translate the japanese dialogue yep but i i bring this particular instance up because I find I find this to be a pri I find because I was looking for a prime instance of a tr of a trans of these translation botches that actively harm the source material that that's being adapted and obvious obviously obviously there's uh, there's other infamous things although I'd, I'd say I'd say when it comes to fucking up um the fucking up trans fucking up translation 
um, Funimation is a bigger culprit than Crunchyroll is. Uh, yeah, I would, that's yeah. not saying. Yeah, at least Crunchy subs are a, 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 a better than Foodie subs most of the time. Mm-hmm. I have had a few. I have had a few glitch issues where the where the where the uh, text for the su- for the subtitles doesn't show up. But like I, but there's a reason why teething troubles is used so often in the engineering world. Hmm. It's get it's gonna happen. Much like say bugs in a code when you're programming. <laughs> what's the difference between a program? What's the difference between a program that works and a program that doesn't work in the eyes of the programmer? There is no difference. We don't know why either works or doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bingo. Oh. But since I think we've danced around it long enough, so I think I think this would be as good a time as any to cover the Crunchyroll originals and, and so and the good the good and the bad when it comes to this. Because as easy as it would be to sla- to slam Crunchyroll doing these originals, they're not they are not all terrible. And the, yeah. the very first thing I'd like to slam about this is the name. Okay. So yes, originals please. originals implies that these are something made by Crunchyroll from the ground up. And we do have examples of that with things like aforementioned High Guardian Spice. <laughs> but most of the Crunchyroll originals are adaptations of other work. They're and were co-produced by other studios. They in a lot of in a lot of times, yes, that's very true. Mm-hmm. Um, in the they would have been better uh, better served uh, going with Crunchyroll original animations for things like. High Guardian Spice, Onyx Equinox, etc., and uh, cr- uh, Crunchyroll, something like Crunchyroll Studios for things that were adaptations from other uh, things that already existed. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines, um, because otherwise you're you're mixing in things that have established uh, established uh, source material and. Thus, you can do a really good comparison and see whether they've succeeded or failed in properly adapting versus the fully uh, 100% original stuff that has no source material to draw from, and you can see whether it lives up to being anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's go down in chronological order Mainly be so that we can see how this has evolved, and thank we actually for... start off on a good foot. Yeah, thank you for doing in chronological order. Because if we went in <sighs> alphabetical order, we'd be jumping around a bit. Oh yeah, chronological is the only way that makes sense. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 first, yes. The first anime that was re- uh, part of the Crunchyroll originals officially was Inspector, which mm-hmm. I will go on record saying is a damn good adaptation. It it's is pretty. Di- I've seen it. It is good. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people complain about it. I actually, when we, uh, when I did a watch party for it, I had some people complain because they didn't, they thought it was a little too boring, which I immediately call out because the thing is, is that it is, it, 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 it's a talk, it is a talking show, but it under the guise of having action. You know, the whole premise of the guy who can't die, or or when he's supposed to die, he can see the future. You, you get the sense there's going to be something with that, but the real focus is on the intellectual side of things, especially with that final confrontation where it's less about like, the guy fighting the ghost and more about the girl literally proving that the, gr- the ghost doesn't exist and going full Phoenix right in a sense on that regard. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was engaging as hell, like the way that she did okay. it, crafting three potential stories knowing that all three would fail but leaving little pieces there so that when she put, brought out her real plot her real uh story all those other stories suddenly become much more relevant i thought that was genius i loved it fantastic just as plain and, and the animation was really good it was done by studio brains base who's a really good studio mm-hmm. it was it was honestly uh, uh, off to a great start however we immediately run into our first problem because it was immediately afterwards that the webtoon stuff started. 
Mm. Power of God. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. Oh I'm dear. Fine. We, we, oh we got, dear. We're, I am we're, fine. We're, we're gonna have to hold. Uh, we're gonna have to hold Zan back a little bit on this one, and Shade. for good reason because. <laughs> Do you smell something burning? I'm oh, fine. yeah, yeah. Woo. I'm fine. Now, <laughs> the only thing you're smelling burning is the orphanage next door. I don't know why it's on fire. <laughs> It is not my fault. I was never over there. That isn't my fault. <laughs> anyway, to be fair, I share some of Zan's rage. Now, I have never read the original manhwa of Tower of God on Webtoon, but I don't have to to understand how bad they botched this. My the animation by Telcom Animation Films was mediocre decent. at best. Mediocre at best. And the story was rushed. It sped through the entire training arc in 13 episodes. And that's there's at least like almost two seasons worth of content there, Let, minimum. I, I will I will open up the 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 Tower of God chapter chapter list right now. Season one of the anime is meant to run through to the very uh, the very first end of season in the manhwa which that end of that end of season occurred oh let me see here god season 2 was like some 300 episodes long um okay so season 1 takes something like nearly 50 pages no over 50 pages and these are not small pages when you think pages you probably think pages in a in a uh in uh, any sort of graphic novel or a book no these one episode or one page of a webtoon is usually this very long you scroll down the page to read this whole episode or chapter it is yeah. like a full episode or chapter of of a graphic novel season one takes 78 of those 78 extremely detailed artistically crafted long form quote-unquote single pages because they're just this long you just scroll down and you read and it's like it's like a scroll almost i would consider it like unscroll like like a literal wall scroll long ass thing it's beautiful. The plots, you follow the plot threads really well. The webtoon is beautiful. So, first of all, from me, if you want to, uh, if you want to experience Tower of God, go fucking read it. Webtoon, go. It's free. You have no excuse not to read it. Honestly, do not go to Crunchyroll, who took seventy-eight chapters of a graphic novel. And squeezed it into fucking thirteen episodes. Yeah, that uh. that is a twenty-four to almost you know because let, let, even if you cut it in half, that's at least twenty to thirty episodes worth of content right there. Yes. All right. Absolutely. That I think would have been reasonable, but no, they squeeze into thirteen, and it fucking shows. At least everybody still learns the most important lesson of Tower of God. Rachel is a bitch. Fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's not kidding, folks. They get they get to that point where she spends the whole season ignoring him, then butters him up throughout the second half, only to fucking betray him at the last possible moment by basically making it appear he's dead. Just and so she could get into the tower. That that point in the manhwa happened in 2014. And this came out in 2020. And not only did they fuck the pacing, they destroyed the actual build-up to it felt like they were connecting again. Mm -hmm. Like like the second half of, 
of 13 episodes. That's not enough time. That's just not enough time. And, uh, you know, Baum, uh, he, he, he felt that Rachel was his everything in the original material. And in the, in the crunchy roll, uh, anime, or it's just not, it's not enough time to get that feeling. It's not enough time. Everything is so rushed that it all feels contrived. Even though when you go back to the source material, it's definitely not contrived. It's all... Every piece of of implication and lampshading that you need is there. So again, fuck the crunchy roll, go to Webtoon. <laughs> And, that's that's too bad. That's that's just too bad. When it comes to when it comes when it comes to the animation, I'm I'm wondering if you thought it was me, thought it was mediocre because when when I looked at when I looked at some some clips, I noticed a distinct lack of shading. Yeah, there's a roughness to the whole thing as well. Like I don't mind it a little bit, but it it just felt. Between that, the shading and the roughness to it, it just felt amateur. Like honestly, the, there's a there's a roughness to the art on webtoon as well. At True. At least at least very early on, it, the, this the 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 art style of of the creator has been evolving throughout the years that they've been writing this, and it's been fantastic yeah. to watch. And I think that's part of the problem is is like yeah, the the later stuff is so polished. That why couldn't they just start like making it more like that instead of trying to copy the roughness of the original? Mm. And that that kind of hurt it a little bit. And the same can kind of hold true for our next subject, which is also another webtoon adaptation, The God of High School. But there, even though I haven't watched the series, I've seen enough clips of it and things like that, that it felt more like that roughness was something by design and not just feeling of cheapness or, or amateurness. Then again, it's Studio Mappa who have a good track record of this kind of shit, mm -hmm. so it makes sense that they were able to pull something like that off. Well, I the there's a very distinct art style to Tower uh, to um, God of High School, um, much like much like uh, Tower of God has its own uh, art style. God of High School has a really good art style as well. That's really it, the character of each of both of these that we've already talked about. the The art style is as much to do with characterizing the world and the people in it, and you get a feeling for what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Like there's a d distinct. What's the best word for this? There's a distinct atmosphere that each art style gives you yeah. <laughs> and so achieving that is fantastic um <laughs> i mean <clears throat> the big thing that really really gets me about the the god of high school anime is that it goes up to the reveal that the main character is actually Sun Wukong. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not even anywhere like that that takes episodes upon episodes to get to. Just like with Tower of God, uh, unlike unlike with the God of, uh, unlike Tower of God, these aren't split into into unique arc episode season formats i mean the newest page says episode 500 and something but <laughs> but just like with tower of god you had like 78 79 episodes and again each of these episodes is a big long chapter that's like an actual chapter in a graphic novel in the same fashion you have a bunch of episodes going through the tournament to that point to where he figures out, oh yeah, I'm actually Sun Wukong, and has that fight. And just like with Tower of God, it's fucking rushed. Mm, yeah, I've heard it was a little bit rushed as well. 
A little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to be generous here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got you. I got they, now easy, the boy, next easy. one. Yeah, let, let's move on before we get uh, Zan more pissed off than he already is. Uh, next on the list, though, is an oddity because I've never even heard of this series. And it was an original work, but it is an anime in every sense of the word. GB8. GB8, I do recall. I haven't seen it yet, but I do recall discussing it. Um, and what? And I remember. I remember. The, I remember that this that it was something that was going to be on my radar, but I never got around to it. The big reason that the big reason that it has my interest is who was in, is who in particular was involved with it. Yoshitaka Amano. Oh well, then yeah, that already gives it credibility right off the fucking bat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was produced by Amano. Mm-hmm. Produced by Amano and was basically used for what for one of his one of his art one of his art projects. Oh wait, a minute. I think I have heard about this one. And I think I think it got pretty ba- it got pretty bashed too because while yes, Amano's art style is fucking gorgeous, trying to translate yeah. that into animation is um, challenging to say the least. Apparently, and- the big <sighs> apparently the big point of critique was the CG. Yeah. yeah, it got really samey and re- and it was really noticeable. And truth yeah. be told, if you if you when it comes to the question of how how do you ad- how do you adapt Amano's art style into an into animation, just rip just crib notes from Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. <laughs> oh, Vampire Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, so good. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. But the use yeah. of CG when it came to the monsters, from what I've heard, was definitely the weak point. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was mediocre at best. So that one was another misstep. Now, next on the list is one that actually did pretty good for itself. Uh, in Japan, it was known as Fly Me to the Moon. However, because obviously, of so- uh, once again, the JoJo effect, song uh, n- naming something after a song, would likely get you in trouble. It was changed to Tanikawa, Over the Moon for You. Well, the, the original Japanese is, is uh, Tonikoku Kawaii, meaning adorable anyways, or cute no matter what. Fair. Huh, okay. <laughs> now, I've seen, I've actually seen this one, start to finish, actually. And, uh... <sighs> There's, there's nothing. Here's the thing. There is nothing bad about this series, but it is just so utterly bland. It is just, uh. it is indescribably bland. This is not vanilla bland. This is unflavored mashed potatoes bland. Uh. Uh, is this, this the is... goop from Mat- from the Matrix bad? When it comes to uh. this. I just, it's just it's just bland it is just so safe and you know Hardboard pu- land uh, uh, no not that bad i mean at least potatoes are nutritious in a way uh but um no nah, it, it's just it's just it's very very safe it's very very pleasant it's very very you know unassuming and you know non you know and non uh yeah, it's just, it's fine. It's just fine. Uh, so, but I I've never seen something just play it so ridiculously safe. I mean, I'm like, this is like, this is like insanely. Yeah, I, I'm out of words. That that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that gives you the idea of that. And to think, Kier Crystal wants to wants me to watch that one for some reason. He has been on my ass about that one. Watch it; it's cute. But like like I said, it's just it's so safe. It's it's kind of silly. <laughs> it's Fair one enough. of the safest slice of life there is. Uh, really, very very much so. That that actually has me worried there. But from there, we move on to the last of our web of the webtoon trilogy, Noblesse. I didn't watch this, so I can't really comment on it too much. I have. Um, I have the webtoon. I have the webtoon is finished. Actually, I might add, it's a nice fifty episodes. So you know, like three Tonka Bon volumes. <laughs> yeah. Um, according to what I've read, um, this takes place in the second half of Noblesse. Doesn't take uh, t- 
take a take place in the first half like the ona the the technically the, the very beginning the noblesse awakening mm-hmm. um is like a prologue that kind of condenses part the most important parts of the first half and then the sec the 13 episodes are supposed to be like the second half i don't what? know how good that is because again remember what i'm saying about each of these episodes they are like really long wall scrolls if you were to turn them into page sized snippets at, at places where it would make sense to make page breaks they'd be like 27 pages a pop incidentally i did find out that um apparently the home video rights for noblesse were picked up by sentai Ooh. which is interesting yeah it, that was announced ba- that was announced back in may of last year so so um look Folks, Sentai needs all the help that they can get these days. They got to face the, 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 the giant monstrosity that is Sony Productions, owning the two biggest anime companies out there in the U.S. They're going to need some help. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> mm-hmm. Anyway, then from there we get to our first fully original uh, production. No, nope, second. Was- this is the first one to come out. Well, n- technically, okay. Okay, this is fully original as in they didn't partner with any other studios. But uh, Gibiato was technically original, didn't have any source material. That's fair. Okay, but yeah, this is like their first fully in-studio original work, Onyx Equinox. Again, had not seen this. In fact, I didn't even know it, I, I didn't even know it existed until today. Mm-hmm. They but... did not market it at all. No, no, they did there not. There was one trailer, and that was it. Which, considering it was their first original production, it's like, why did this one not get produ- uh, get any kind of marketing compared to you, the other? You th- guess you think this would be it? If I had to guess why why they why there was so much cold feet regarding marketing, it has to do with the subject matter. Because let yeah. because let's not forget this is dealing with as this is dealing with Aztec mythos. And as and the Aztec gods, aside from being dicks, love blood, lots of it. And Onyx Equinox is definite. I wouldn't say it's a. I wouldn't say it's a gore fest. We're not dealing with Fangoria level shit. But when it. But when things get nasty, they do get nasty. All right, fair enough. Still, just from what I can sell, just from what little I can see of it, it looks like it was actually. It looks pretty good at the very least. It and it was. <laughs> It can, right. I was a little bit annoyed that it left on that it um deci- that it decided to go on a cliffhanger, but but um that's a but that's a classic case of trying to tease for a second season. Studios don't do this. No. That brings us to our next our, our next anime adaptation and the one that has the most episodes of everything of all the Crunchyroll originals. So I'm a spider. So what? Which the I only 24 yet, episode but, series. I haven't seen, per se. But first off, I appreciate I appreciate breaking the trend of only do, of only doing 12ers. But more importantly, the premise that the premise and the look of the thing, I'd say I'd say I'd say it was a little bit more on point for what they wanted to do. Yeah, and. This this had a lot going as here. For one, it's it's an it was an isekai right at the peak of the isekai boom, or at least right at the cusp of it. Bef- just before it started the bal- uh, level out, it like it it came out during that point, which gave it a lot of things going in its favor. Secondly, it wasn't your standard isekai. I mean, this was more on the lines of uh, reincarnated as a slime instead of being reincarnated as this he- uh, hero in a fantasy world. They're turn into a spider that just happens to be OP as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it had that it, you know to crib it off that certainly if you're gonna if you're gonna copy copy from the best. <laughs> and that you know it, and it was an interesting idea. I've seen the first episode. Animation looks good. The whole you know c- good use of CG here and there. Then again, it's also Katakawa. You know it's it's Kata, it's based on a Katakawa light novel. Certainly can't go wrong there. It was made by Studio 
Millipence, which I've never even heard of them. In fact, they have very little to their name. The Actually, um, can, all things considered, it's a miracle this came out as good as it did, considering the only other big work they've done is um, oh, Berserk. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, remember remember that they uh, this was co-animated um, with Gemba. Gemba Studio, um, and I believe Gemba was the one that was mostly uh, no, hold on, who was it? There's one other. The guys who did Uda Sekai Picnic were also responsible for the Berserk um, CD. That's other, fair. So there's other people who, do, so there's other people who are to blame. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Mia Ponce, which is actually what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be million thoughts or mm -hmm. a thousand thoughts. Mia Ponce. Mm -hmm. It's which is why it's Miru Ponce in in Japanese because because French to Japan does not work. No, it does not. <laughs> but um. Oh wow. Okay. Um. So. This studio was created by uh, Naoko Shiraishi of Gainax. That explains a lot, honestly. Yeah. Especially since I'd say around the, t you've got you've got a lot of Gainax people, a lot of, a fair few ex Shaft people, and a fair few um, ex Mad ex Madhouse people. Mm hmm. Um. So, the, so I'd, even though they don't have a whole lot to their name, they ha they have they have a fair amount when it comes to their re their individual resumes. The same does not hold true, however, for our next entry on this list: Doctor Ramune, mysterious disease specialist. Oh, Again, God. never fucking heard of this series. Uh, this one doesn't even look like it was dubbed because I'm looking on Wikipedia. There's not even a dub listing here. No, it's it's all it's all in Japanese. Yeah, and the studio Platinum Vision has again very little to their name and none of it I recognize. Um Sayuki Reload Blast I definitely recognize because Sayuki is fantastic. Oh, that's fair, but it's a sequel series. It's a sequel series, so that's It's a sequel to Sayuki Sayuki Reload Gunlock. <laughs> yeah, there's a new Sayuki so, series this season, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that doesn't really do much for it in that regard. It's it's gonna something we'd have to just see for ourselves. However, now we start getting into the shit <laughs> <laughs> because, ladies and gentlemen, now to be fair, this is not Crunchyroll's fault, but we still gotta call this shit out because it's time to talk about X Arm. Oh, I've been, wait I've been waiting for weeks to, to do this. Oh, uh, Lord. You'll recall that originally I wanted to do an episode ripping on, riffing on X-Arm, and that just expanded onto the this current form. Now, yep. I want to I make clear that when all that I had was the was the promotional poster, I think, I think it was when they were announcing that wave of Crunchyroll Originals at New York Comic Con a few years ago. X-Arm, from that poster and from how it was described, it was like, okay, this is something I can get into. I do like my, I do like Japanese cyberpunk. And this this seems like it's right in that wheelhouse of um, Shiro Masamune's work. Yeah, it definitely reminded me of, of Gitz, for sure. I was reminded less of Gitz and more of his earlier work, Appleseed. Yeah, Appleseed, too, that. yeah. But uh, I mean, the the actual first Tonkoban cover volume almost directly evokes Gitz feelings. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see that. When it comes to the manga, I can't, I can't talk about, the, I can't talk about that because I haven't read it. But then that trailer dropped, and we roasted that trailer back in the old days. <laughs> hell, I think everybody did. I think everyone took one look at that, like, oh God, help us! And uh, <laughs> no, they turned off, they turned off, com they turned off um, comments for the trailer. Yeah, but it doesn't. It, it has no dislikes, so that's something. <laughs> uh, funny, funny man over here. I'm very funny. 
funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's what that's what you two would like us to think, but never underestimate the power of open source designers. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think I think it's time to break out an old gen that I haven't had a chance to do in a long fucking time. <laughs> Let, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, who? Let's get ready to ratio. <laughs> You've been holding that one for a while. <laughs> I've had good reason to use it. Oh, and, and if you think for a minute, oh, okay, well, it's just a trailer. Maybe they were still working on it. <laughs> oh, ye, ye, of, ye of so much hope. I want, I want to get one thing out of my system right now. A lot of people were saying that it looked like a PS2 game. That is bullshit, and anyone who argues that should, should be keelhauled publicly. They should be oh, yeah. killed publicly because that's giving a bad name to PS2 games. No, 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 yeah, no, oh, no, 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 that is not fair. This shit made early '90s CG look um look like stuff from today by comparison. We're talking stuff like the original Beast Wars or reboot looked better than this. At least, and those were good series. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but you know. They at least have the excuse of the fact that people were just starting to figure out this whole CG thing. And, uh, yeah. the, and the writing is able to... The writing for Beast Wars and Reboot is able to carry the problem. Yeah. Uh, but there's no denying that the animation back then was a little stiff. There, there were issues with it. But that is nothing compared to what X-Arm gave us. I am glad I dodged this fucking bullet. Let me put things in perspective for everyone. I am cons I am one of these I am a very stubborn motherfucker when it comes to starting and finishing series. Barring outside barring outside influence, of course. If I I am that I am that guy who chastises other sports fans for leaving the game early. Because you paid for your fucking ticket, you're going to see the whole game until until the until the final whistle blows. And I could not get through one episode of X-Arm. <laughs> That because, should tell you something, folks. Because of the sheer levels of Uncanny Valley. And for a while, yes, I, I did throw shade at Crunchyroll about this. And then that article came out where I realized Crunchyroll got, Crunchyroll got screwed over on, the, on, this de on this deal as well. Because, and this is the reason why we say this wasn't Crunchyroll's fault. This was all the fault of the director. Because he had very little, if he had very little, if any animation experience. Most of his experience was on music videos and commercials at best, and not much when it came to animation, and vi and even very little when it came to CG animation. And his mindset was that they would that they would be able to just they would be they would be able to just handle everything by using mocap. That their ex their lack of experience didn't matter because they they could just use mocap and it would and it would solve all their problems. Except the director of B Stars had told them that's a bad idea. Don't do that. He had he and a few other people have talked to, have specifically talked about the fact that they have to they have to mess around with the anim, with the animation even when they're doing mocap to make it still appear like an anime. Otherwise, it ends yeah. up looking too realistic for and, the wrong reasons. And this director Yoshikatsu Kimura. He was bragging that he was going to do better than most animation do. He was going to show them how it's done. Basically, this was the Japanese equivalent of John Romero's about to make you his bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> With the exact same fucking result to boot! This is, this is what we mean every time when, when we say, Pride goeth before a fall, and you're <laughs> yeah. going to fall hard, motherfucker. It would be fair of me to call him the Japanese Icarus. Oh! Wait a question, motherfucker. Oh, well. goes, yeah. goes the sun. And that's the reason why X-Arm is so frustrating to me, because if it, I'd imagine that if you took away the animation elephant in the room, you'd have a decent, mad-ish at, at worst, um, sci um, bit of, <laughs> bit of um, cyberpunk throwback. I, yeah. From what I hear about the manga, it's actually pretty good. I'm, yeah, I'm certain. That uh, it's okay. But 
once again, the reason why the term elephant in the room is used so often is because elephants are big and hard to ignore. Yeah. And nobody's going to give two shits about the story when they can't even watch it because of how bad the animation looks. You know, I'm not a, I'm not one of those people that thinks that the lo that looks are everything that you know, you know, it has to be like the hot, best looking show on earth. But at the very least it has to be watchable. You know, make it something that is at least somewhat palatable. If you can't even do that, how the fuck am I going to get invested in anything else? Yeah. yeah. Let let me put it this way. With how bad the animation quality is in X-Arm, you could call the animation quality of Berserk 2016 the greatest CG animation of 2016. Mm. There's there's praising with faint dams. <laughs> yeah, right. And I, there, I did encounter one or two people desperate enough to try and defend it, which um, that's high praise. Which one bold bold um, it's a case of you get you you're talking some mad shit for someone in crusading distance. And You're talking mad shit for someone in drilling range. Yeah, and two, the I had I had brought I had done something I rarely do when dis, when discussing because people people had said that if you if that I should focus on the story and not focus on the animation and I had said there's a term in TV tropes known as everybody remembers the stripper, <laughs> <laughs> and while that is usually applying to fan servicey things. I think it applies just as well to here. If you bring up X Arm to an anime fan and they don't cringe, they're going to talk about the animation. Yeah. They're, even if they do cringe, they're going to talk about the animation. Most That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's just one of those things that you can. It, it, that is the. That is going to be the number one thing people remember about this show. It doesn't matter if the story was, even if the story was absolutely amazing. Every, only thing people are going to remember is the sh how shit the animation was, and that is their legacy now. So guess what? You done fucked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So that brings us to our next entry on the list, and this one actually is an interesting one because this was the first time Crunchyroll directly worked with Adult Swim of all people mm -hmm. for, and. But it was also a production IG work, which automatically should gives it points. And it was actually aired on. It was actually originally aired on Toonami, mm -hmm. and that would be Fena, Pirate Princess. Yeah. As uh, so someone who is three of us in here, Gary, I, I'm almost certain all four of us have seen this show because we all pretty much watch Toonami. Yep. I will say, for its first season, it's actually solid. Yeah. I, I'd the also like. To I'd also like to point out that since, you know, working with Adult Swim and airing on Toonami, this uh, max of another big O season two. Oh, yeah. And I think it deserves one because yeah, the story was good. It was very solid, had a very good conclusion while leaving the door open for a second season. It had great animation because production IG know what the fuck they're doing. And you know who did the music? Mm-hmm. Oh, the queen herself, Yuki Kajira. Yeah. You, you get Yuki Kajira in, a, in, in an anime, you know you're off to a, you, you know you've got a good wing going. If oh, she could make even sort of online tolerable, you know when she does something works on a good season, it's good or a good series, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, anybody who's watching, you know, Kimetsu no Yaiba Entertainment District arc right now. Mm. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But yeah. everybody remembers the stripper in good ways too. Uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, but Fena Pirate Princess was definitely one of their better outings because they had it, it was it was and this was a completely original thing. There was no there's no source material here. This is it. Yeah. But it's in a full on anime. It fits all the it checks all the boxes and it's an enjoyable one. So if you want if you want to see a Crunchyroll original done right, Fena Pirate Princess is not a bad way to go. I think the only issue that we had were some head scratching moments with the ending. Yeah, you really got to pay attention to the ending for it to make sense, and even then, it might still leave you a little confused. Yeah. But if that's the worst you've got going for you, you know, it really ain't all that bad. I don't even especially think the ending is bad. It was just weird. Yeah, yeah. but exactly. Uh, but the the best I think the best part about Fena um, is the the is the fact that this is fully original. This is not something that had a basis on something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it it was it's 
much like some other banger shows that have come out recently, in, and by recently I mean like in the last 10 years, Recreators, fully original anime, VV Fluorite, uh, Fluorite's Eyes Song, uh, fully original anime, and Fena Pirate Princess, fully original anime, all really good. And this this is, um, I think, one of the big... This is one of the big examples I would I would always like to use to show you don't need a manga or a light novel to make a good anime. No. In fact, you could probably make a better one without one. In some ways. However, this is where things go downhill. Because that was the last good thing that we can honestly say about <laughs> Crunchyroll Originals. Mm -hmm. Because then we get to the infamy. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mention it, and then we're going to keep walking, because after this is High Guardian Spice, and we're walking, we're walking. And now we're at Blade Runner Black Lotus. Well, yep. not Once only again. Bla Blade Runner Black Lotus. I've, I said this, I've said this plenty of times, and I'll say, and I'll say it again. Yes, you, yes, you have. Um, I, think, I think that for a streaming service, Black Lotus is fine. For t for weekly television, putting that putting that on tsunami was a bad idea. Uh, yeah, because waiting that long between episodes when it's hard to pay attention to one is just it. You just wear out so fast. Like it, it. We after one episode, I was already just like whatever. I couldn't watch it. It was just boring. I'd and, say I'd say the I'd say the reason I'd say the reason for that is twofold. One. Is some is something is um a pitfall that can happen when you're trying to set up a mystery over the course of set of one of one long story, and that is you need to give bread you need to give an appropriate amount of breadcrumbs that makes people want to keep coming back to get more of it. I.e., you give them answers, but those answers lead to more questions. Yeah, but not in a frustrating manner. It has to lead to more questions in a way that makes sense. Exactly. It doesn't exa it doesn't exactly help that um Ish Jeez, why why is it why is his name currently escaping me? But the di the director involved the director involved the director in involved with this. Um whose whose work I have seen of quite a bit and he's definitely prolific when it comes to bringing in CG and and anime. But the problem, the the problem that ends up happening is, so much of his animation style looks the same. Yeah. <sighs> and now there, I will note that there was, there is one, there is one more that I I do want to talk about briefly, that that Crunchyroll is working on and and um is supposed to be coming out sometime in twenty twenty two. That being Freak Angels. Actually, yeah, it's coming out later this month. That was going to be where, yeah, this is, this one isn't up in the air. It is another original series. It's not an, it's, and, it is, it's an or adaptation. Or it's a webcomic adaptation, which, it, but it's also one that's not an anime base. It's actually based on a webcomic by Warren Ellis. Yeah. Which, I love Warren Ellis's work. I've made that explicitly clear. Whether it be whether it be whether it be the whether it be the epic that is Transmetropolitan, or hey or the, or the or the work that he did on Castlevania, or his really really good um, interpretation of Moon Knight that put a new spin on what on the whole question of whether Moon Knight is crazy or if, you're, if he actually talks to Kanchu. Um. And I've made a. No secrets about how much I love Spider Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a yeah. big Warren Ellis fan. Same here. Same oh, here. That, same yeah. here. Yeah, that's where I've heard about Warren Ellis. I've heard of that particular series. So about Transmetropolitan and Spider Jerusalem. Spider Jerusalem's most best quote, the one I use constantly with everybody else: "A paranoid is just someone in possession of all the facts." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, but it is, 
it is a in but Freak Angels is trying to be this interesting mix of post apocalyptic and steampunk. Uh, when he talked to, when Warren Ellis talked about it at San Diego Comic Con, he said, "I've written 200 pages and I still have no idea what it's about. It's retro punk. It's near future steampunk." Um, and it's basic. It is. It is. Um, it is disaster. Fi it is disaster fiction. The, the um, and these, these the comic was well re was well received. And it and ended up win and ended up winning an Eagle Award back in 2010. But what I'm what I'm curious about is a are they are they going to present this proper is, properly? Because again, remember there was the issue of dealing with something that isn't quite anime in regard in regards to in regards to spice. And more importantly, who's going to be handling the animation? Which at this point at this point in time I don't know. Uh, from what is implied, it's fully going to be Crunchyroll Studios. Mm. That is concerning. Yeah, that's a red flag to me. Now, Onyx Equinox was done by Crunchyroll Studios, and the animation for that was was certainly not was certainly not bad. But again, it's a, it's an issue of the of knowing of knowing the audience and if i'm being honest um i think freak angels would do much better on netflix than it than it would be on crunchyroll yeah, we um i'm not so sure that i really liked the key visual for uh for freak angels that we saw in the crunchyroll originals announcements mm hmm uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find that image. Uh, I found one that's okay. It's not the the group key image, but it is a key image. Uh, let me post it in council. I see one. I see one that seems to be a group shot, and it's all. It's. Oh yeah, I see the problem right away. Oh. I'm not so sure I I, I like it. I'm no, so I sure see problems with this. Be... Well, I think we see the problem, but what? But I think we should make clear what the problem is. Okay, shades, you start. Well, one, it's definitely an anime style. Like that's the first thing I see kind of jumping out at me, is that this is trying to look like an anime, but it looked like the ant the the arts quality reminds me of something from like the early to mid 2000s from for like me the it, early it, days of cg anime of cg animation like when the they started using computers to do regular animation with it yeah the, the early early days of digipaint yeah yeah um, that's that's it yeah the the thing that gets me is it doesn't look like it wants to commit it doesn't yeah. look like it wants to commit to an anime style or something more Western. And in so doing, you've got what look like some Western hallmarks and some anime hallmarks, and it's this mishmash. On top of that, it looks like these characters were all designed either by themselves or in pairs. There are some that, that look like they were designed in pairs and then pastiched. It, it doesn't look like these people were designed as a group shot. It looked like these people were designed in small units and then put into a group shot. Yeah. And, and then finally, um, it, especially with that guy pulling down his shades, it almost looks parody. It almost looks parody in certain yeah. ways. Yeah. Not to mention, the background art doesn't really match the character art at all. No, it's just a generic background. Um, well, it's a generic ruined, ruined London background, but yeah. Yeah. Looking, looking at the at, at the um, at the animation style that was in the tr that was in the trailer that was posted back in December. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, it ha it has more in common with the with the animation style you would see in you would see in those direct to video comic book um movies. 
Ugh, that's not you know, much like, better. You know, think things like, you know, the kind that you were that you'd see for the last few years from, say, um, DC especially. It's yeah, not, it's not bad, but the but the problem that I'm having is that I'm not seeing a strong voice. Whereas the the comic, the comic itself, from what I from what I saw of it, looked very much like a '90s indie comic, like early early '90s indie comic. Not not the not in the pre-image days. I'll put it that way. Almost. To a, to a certain degree, it looks like something I would have seen in Ver, I would have seen in um, Vertigo. Yeah, I'm looking at the trailer right now. Actually, mm, eh, yeah, I'm not. It's not selling me. And oh, I'm not to, that's yeah. not to say that the, that this is going to be absolute dog shit. That we've certainly seen where the bottom of the barrel is, and this isn't going to be at that bottom. No, not by any stretch, but it's it this is I'm definitely getting a mediocre vibe from this. Like it wants to be bigger than it actually can be. Uh, and for me for me personally, I think that, I think that when first off when I found when I found out that a Warren Ellis webcomic was getting adapted into this I ended up scratching my head, like not. I wasn't. I wasn't angry. I wasn't happy. I was just. This? Why? Why? You know, honestly, looking at this, this the animation and art style. You know what I'm reminded of? What? I kind of get the, the. It's kind of in a similar level of quality of Wolverine and the X Men. Just like a knockoff version of it. I could see mm. that, and Wolverine and the X Men was what. 2011-ish, give or take. And truth and truth be told, when it came to when it came to animated um, X Men around that time, um, Wolverine and the X Men had the unfortunate um, position of trying to follow of trying to come after X Men Evolution. Yeah. So to st to steal a phrase from Ein Heryar, it is once again jumping after Vicula. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we do have one other uh, sub uh, upcoming project, which is once again a co-production with Adult Swim, which means we're going to be having to see deal with this shit on Toonami before too long. Mm -hmm. And it's an adaptation of the popular video game franchise Shenmue. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, and to make to make it even more of a red flag, the same studio that handled Tower of God Telecom Animation, they're handling this one. Oh, oh, good. Dear. Then we're going to get period accurate animations for the game. I want to hold your breath on that. Here's the, uh, here's the poster. The poster looks... Eh. Hey, it looks just like the Dreamcast game. <laughs> Much as I hate to admit it, that's not far off. <laughs> uh. Like I said, period accurate animation! Like I get the I get the idea of of wanting to of wanting to maintain the look the look from the games, but it looks it honestly looks like a mad it honestly looks like something that Madhouse would put out in the early two thousands. Yeah, which, that's definitely a vibe I get. Which, let's be fair, what Madhouse made in the early two thousands was good shit. But if we're making a Madhouse two thousands now, it had better be good shit. Shen, are, am I going to have to do quick time events to watch this show? Oh God! <laughs> oh God! Am I going to am I going to have to get a crash course in Italian? Absolutely, monk. Well, okay, I'm probably going to have to, given some given some of my friends, but that's beside the point. But the. For me, the for me the big problem with with trying to do a animated adaptation of Shenmue is the moment to do that was was around the time Shenmue three finally came out. Which is a <laughs> on a different note, talking about disappointments. Disappointment. But there's also the but and for me and personally for me for me I don't think I'd be alone in saying that. A lot of the ideas and ambition that Shenmue had, that particular spirit has been inherited by 
um, Ryu ga Gotoku or Yakuza? Absolutely. Yeah. Yakuza especially. Well, Ryu ga Gotoku is the same thing. <laughs> oh, well, my bad. It's just the, I... ja just the Japanese name. <laughs> yeah. Forgive my ignorance. And then it gets, oh, no, even, it gets even more confusing because the U.S. name for the most recent Yakuza is Yakuza Like a Dragon, which, which is, is the what... English translation of Ryu ga Gotoku. Yep. Whereas in, in Japan, it's just Ryu ga Gotoku 7. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotta, gotta love the fact that they named it Like a Dragon, and the only reason it was named Yakuza in the U.S. is because they didn't think Like a Dragon would be marketable enough. Yeah. <laughs> But reg but regardless, because of because of the fact that that kind of spirit has been has been taken on and gone even and gone much further with with Yakuza and the fact that Yakuza I'd say Yakuza zero through six is it is basically doing that episodic story that Shenmue wanted to do. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. You're you're one hundred and ten percent there. Um, it is. There, there. The, I, I have too many words, and there are not, and there is not enough minutes. So the words are, Yakuza, go play now. All game, all good. Mm -hmm. I do, ho I do hope that more that samurai themed one eventually gets um translated. I, uh, <laughs> you mean the one where you're playing Kiryu? And, Ky no, excuse me, you're playing Kiryu's dis like ancestor. You're just playing Kiryu in, in fucking Sengoku, period. I swear to God. Yeah, and? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, also, other one. Go play Judgment, a.k.a. Judge Eyes. Good game. Go play. I'll play. Yeah. <laughs> well, even even their, even their take on Fist of the North Star wasn't too bad. <laughs> but re but regardless, I think with the, with the last two... Um, entries in their originals, it's a it's the case that we the case that we end up going with is question mark, like just questioning the decision and what and what you're trying to do because if it if this is Crunchyroll trying to trying to be their own take on Netflix, that is that is a poor that is a poor decision to make because of the fact that the that um Netflix has a generalized audience. It dips its it dips into as many ponds as it can. Crunchyroll since day one has cultivated one particular type of audience and one particular type of audience exclusively. And that weebs. Is, yes, weebs. <laughs> and while the, while there's certainly nothing wrong with having that kind of specialized audience, when you try and bring when you try and bring non weeb things into that weeb audience, they're not going to be that receptive. It would be if, it would be like it would be like trying to introduce um trying trying to trying to put say WWE programming or Junior Land programming on New Japan World. <laughs> uh, that hurts. People who people who are people who are watching New Japan World are watching it specifically for the for Puroresu. Specifically, New Japan's brand of puro resu. Yes. Um, same thing. Same thing goes with people who watch um, DDT World because, well, DDT is off their fucking rocker to say the least. But the the point the point with this is that it goes back to that to that analogy that I used for a certain idiot on the on the across forum. Hey. <laughs> you do not go into an ice cream parlor. And expect and expect to see jalapenos as a topping. Yeah. First off, that would be absolutely disgusting. Second of all, people go to an ice cream parlor for a sweet and savory, not spicy. Yep. I'm sure. And yes, I'm fair. I am sure that there are some that there are some spicy desserts in some de in some Denny's at some place I haven't heard of, or or at a Waffle House somewhere. That is reaching. So don't even bring that up with me. That's what we call a niche of a niche of a niche in a niche. Mm -hmm. And I think that when it comes to that's the that's the reason why even if even if there's a heavy amount of promotion for things like Freak Angels or things like Shenmue, 
Okay, well, to be honest, Shenmue probably has a better chance, but... What... But if you were... If I were to look for Crunchyroll ads, what do you suppose that they would be advertising right now? Most of it's probably going to be whatever they're getting from the anime season. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be. Uh, in fact, let me let's do let me do a little experiment. I'm going to I'm going to look at Crunchyroll's YouTube page. I'm I'm going to make a, a further point on not going in an ice cream parlor asking for jalapenos. Um. Even if you are co cultivating an audience of weebs and you present something weeb-like like Shenmue, you're now at the risk of losing the second part, read the damn room. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the time to, to, as you said, probably the best time to do a Shenmue animation would have been when Shenmue 3 was launching. And it probably would have done better than Shenmue 3, but we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> so I, but, I ended up going on the... I end up going on the Crunchyroll Collection YouTube page, and I want to just go. I want to just go through what series are referenced in the first few um, the first few tri um, clips that are clips that are shown on the page. Okay. One of Boruto, World Trigger, One Piece, Miss Kororitsu from the Monster Development Department, um, the Strongest Sage with the Weakest Crest, Kimetsu no Yaiba Entertainment District Dark, Hunter Hunter. In the land of Lidel, um, Orient, Platinum End, one more, one more from Demon Slayer, and one from Attack on Titan Final Season. Not a single bit of their originals. I can't imagine why. No, oh, no clue at all. Mm. Because their originals have just been so successful and beloved. I I do rem I do remember reading an article about how the Crunchyroll Studios in Japan is a mystery box, i.e., being extremely secretive. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. But that's no, I don't I don't like that. That's that's like um, that's like how Sony of Japan treats or Sony of America treats Japanese developers trying to get games onto the PlayStation Store and making them submit applications in, in, in English and only in English. Mm -hmm. Creating an intentional black box between you and the people you're trying to cultivate is fucking heinous and breeds a, an atmosphere of distrust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, th I, think, I think this is as good a time as any to... Lean into the lean into the what the what the future likely holds for um for Crunchyroll. Now, obviously, I don't think that they're going in under anytime soon. There's way too much momentum. I do Sony think owns that, them. I do think that there is going to be a logistical nightmare for the next couple of years regarding how, regarding how subscriptions are handled when it comes to the, when it comes to this transfer of ownership. Um. Yeah. Is I, Sony going to keep the tiered subscription model? Time will tell. If they don't keep the tiered subscription model, they're going to have a riot. Yeah. No, I think the bigger thing is, is I don't think... I don't see Crunchyroll Originals lasting much longer after this. I think that's going to go away. Because it has proven to not be a success. It has had way too many failures for its successes to be of any value. I mean, yeah, we're going to get stuff like Inspector Season 2, but Tower of God, God of High School, Noble Noblesse, Onyx Equinox, uh, X-Arm, High Guardian Spice, Blade Runner Black Lotus, all of those shows... Well, okay, Blade Runner is still on the, t on the fence, but everything else has been pr pretty much a failure. You know, yeah, you've had successes like Inspector and Spider, but that doesn't... And, okay, Fena... But those three successes don't make up for all the big failures. Nobody's going to remember those successes because I don't hear people talking about Inspector. I don't hear people talking about Spider. I honestly don't even hear that many people talking about Fena, even though it deserves it. Most people are talking about, when they talk about Crunchyroll Originals, they're talking about... Spice. 
Ari Guardian Spice, X Arm, and others. That's what they're looking at, and that's if that's the if that's the image people have of of Crunchyroll Originals. Why would you keep that going? Well, and right now, looking at Crunchyroll Originals, High Guardian Spice is huge failure, and it is it is gargantuan. It is mammoth. Yeah. Um, has overshadowed the fact that other originals have come after it or even exist. Yeah, the squeaky um, will gets the grease. I said the same thing when it came to Netflix's relationship with anime, that the amount of vitriol towards bop flicks has overshadowed some very good anime that Netflix has co-produced. And I specifically bring up Great Pretender, which I think anybody who is a fan of anime should watch. Mm-hmm. It, it's gotten praise from all fronts. So some of the best <laughs> tubers out there have been singing its praises, so you're definitely not wrong on that front. I cannot promote that series more. <laughs> but with even now, in 2022, when you see discussions about uh, Crunchyroll originals, the first complaints you are seeing, and usually the first posts you are seeing, are the continuing flame war of High Guardian Spice, both the detractors and the supporters. And there are crazy people on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I would argue that there are more crazy people on the side supporting it, but that's probably a little bit of confirmation bias. Um, it, the, the Crunchyroll originals that are still upcoming or that might have some potential or have come in the past, they're just lost by the wayside at this point. They are they are detritus. They are debris. They are the tumbleweed across the empty desert while the crying Indian looks at the pile of trash. Mm-hmm. Well, he, well, he can't he can't cry about Cle- he can't cry about Cleveland having a shit baseball team as much as he used to. <laughs> I, mean, they're still, I mean, they're still shit. They're still shit, but that, but so is their whole division. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the I have I have a bit of a theory as to why Crunchyroll and a few others are tr- are um are heading this off are trying to dip are trying to dip into this pool despite the, despite the repeat failures. From now, for Netflix, the big reason, the big reason, as Bennett the Sage had pointed out, is because it's a reliable audience after they got that they could fall back on, after they got screwed over by Marvel. Um, for High Dive's another High Dive's a whole other can of worms, and they're just trying to get their footing, and hopefully with the AMC deal, they end up doing that. But with with uh, but with a lot of cases, anime in the last in the last two years has outright exploded in ter- in terms of in terms of the market share that it has compared to compared to where it was even five years ago and granted this granted this has caused this has caused a bit of a overworking question to to get raised but that's a story for another day but I would imagine a lot of a lot of com- a lot of entertainment companies are seeing of seeing this, and especially seeing how manga is kicking the ass of the big two when it comes to comics, despite how much, mu- despite how many billions the MCU makes, which is something we talk, which is something we talked about in the past. They're seeing this and trying to find a, and and are looking for ways to head that off in the past or dip into that particular market. And once again, once you, when you have somebody on the outside looking in, thinking that they understand how to dip into that market, they end up having the wrong idea on what they should be dipping into. Now, of course, that's me. That is me um, putting my, putting on my tinfoil hat. But that but that would seem to be the best reasoning I can think of as to why Crunchyroll, Netflix, and so on are insistent on these originals. Some people are getting, and oddly enough, in 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 that regard, Netflix at least has a better idea. Live action adaptations aside, I I would go one step further because this is an issue that seems to be happening across Western media in general. Whether it's uh, video services dipping into anime, whether it's uh, 
comic book services dipping into manga, whether it's video games in the West trying to dip into and, Im and imitate and emulate video games from Asia. It's <sighs> all these all these companies see the vast market share leaving the immediate the immediate surrounds. They, they see it leaving the Western markets and centralizing on the Asian markets. And like you said, people from the outside looking in, they think they have a grasp on why, and they fail to actually have a grasp on why. Let me spell it out in black and white for in the astronomically small chance one of these execs somehow comes across this video. Nobody wants to be proselytized to. None of us want to be subject to a spiraling purity test. Very, that, that is very much the case. And I do, th I do think th I, um, now, of course, there's the there's the question of what what about that first wave of anime inspired works? Why don't they why don't those count under this? Um, that wasn't ta that wasn't taken as that wasn't taken as a feeding frenzy at the time. It was just that was just a ca a case of a fair few people taking inspiration from manga and then and then applying that to their own work. That's the reason when it comes to when it comes to these attempts. You're not seeing me put things like Avatar or Teen Titans in that bunch. No. They took inspiration from it, but they also took the right inspirations from it. The idea, the certain ideas from that worked. But they weren't trying to use it for their own ends. They were just saying, hey, this looks cool. Let's see if we can do something like that with ours. Mm -hmm. And to, the, to that end... I do think you're going to I do think you're going to see more attempts but but what I think what I think is what I think is most certainly going to happen is a lot of a lot of those attempts are going to are going to fall on deaf ears or they're only going to be focused on by a minority of a minority of weebs or ju or just or just fans of animation period I'd, Im I'd imagine that when it comes to something like Thunderbolt Fantasy, more people watch through fan subs than watch through legit reason, legit means. I don't have any evidence of that myself, but that's but I could see that happening. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, going back to things like some of the stuff that has been injected by Funny and Crunchyroll and others. Uh, there are people who just eschew dubs or subs from Western companies entirely because they, again, don't want to be proselytized at and don't want to see your personal vendettas. They want the source material. Even if even if that proselytization isn't there, he's try saying that five times fast. Um, <laughs> enough damage is done. Enough damage is done to the point where you have the age-old line of "fool me once, shame on you; fool me twice, shame on me." Yeah. I've made it no I, I've I've made it clear I'm willing to judge every dub on its own merits. If the dub itself if the change if they make changes to a dub, it doesn't immediately bother me. But I'm also very well aware that because of all of the big mistakes that they've that groups like Funimation and Crunchyroll have made, that I'm always having to keep an eye out and pay a cl bit closer attention just to make sure they haven't slipped something in trying to get past me. They've done it before. They'll do it again if they think they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. I'm cough. not falling for that again. Cough, cough, prison school. Cough, cough, dragon maid. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but with the, with that said, I think I think that particular warning is a good capstone to leave things off for this week. Now, I do have a, I do have a few things that that I have that I have coming down the pipe next. Um, for the for the coming week for the coming few days, um, I do I do have a couple interviews lined up. Um, on on um Saturday on Saturday I will be camo I will be doing a cameo on a podcast that our good friend Pedals in the Breeze is starting. Um, of on Friday, a Valley of the Judge. We will actually be having two Valley of the Judge this week. 
On Tuesday, we'll be looking at the quick start version of Tidebreaker. And on Saturday, our our new season, that being mm, covering Veil of the Void, because we needed to cover something that wasn't fantasy adjacent, or well, as fantasy adjacent. Veil of the Void is in science fantasy. Um, yeah. You mean Friday, though. You said yeah, Saturday. Fr yeah, Friday. Sorry. Um, on Sunday, and it may be a bit of time before, before, it, before you, you all actually see it, but myself, Zan, and a few others will be taking part in a one-shot with Tanner running Heavens and Heresies. And, and then Sunday night, Sunday night will be the return of Geek Watch, and we'll be and we'll be doing our first "What If" story. So <laughs> keep an eye out for that. I'm the main character. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my nope. name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>